I will explain the surgical procedure for partial thrombectomy uh, that I am performing. The patient has a herniated disc at the L4-5. The scope is inserted from the uh, slightly uh, caudal direction, uh, atrizing the interamnal space to its maximum extent. First, the sleeve is placed on the upper edge of the L5 lamina. Uh, this allows us uh, starting from the bone, uh, reducing the burden of the soft tissue handling. Subsequently, the lower edge of L4 lamina is identified. We refer to the intersection of the L4 and L5 as the delta. Uh, from there, the calcium longitude is inserted along the lower edge of the L4 lamina, removing the soft tissue attached to the bone, which makes the upper edge of the L5 clearly visible. After identifying the upper edge of the L5 and the ligamental thrombus, uh, we drew the necessary amount of the lower edge of L4. Inserting the scope from more caudal direction contribute to the preserving the bone with securing the working space by shaving the inner edge of the lamina. The scope is then tilted towards the midline, and the superficial layer of the ligamentous problem is excised. At this point, a punch is used to remove the superficial layer. It is recommended to perform this as close to the midline as possible. Before removing the deep layer of the ligamentous problem, the attachment site of the ligamentous problem and the attachment of the superior articular process are drilled. The reason for this will be explained later. After removing the superficial layer, the deep layer will appear. Removing it carelessly with the punch increases the risk of dual injury. So I remove it with a long jawed basket punch. At this point, it is preferable to make the hole closer to the midline. This is because the dual matter extends from the dorsal side to the ventral side, and inserting the calcium longitude closer to the midline uh, reduces the risk of dual injury. The ligamentous problem is removed up to the attachment of the superior articular process, and the resection is performed until the lateral aspect of the root is visible. If pre-thinning of the superior articular process by drilling the has been done, it becomes possible to remove it with calcium longitude, even uh, when the lateral aspect of the root is difficult to see. There is a fat above the drill, uh, although uh, it can be removed with a punch. Uh, hooking it with a hook uh, allow the surface of the root to be easily seen with a water irrigation. After cauterizing the lateral aspect of the root with a bipolar and confirming its mobility, the root is retracted. The sleeve is retracted to reach the disc. At this point, as a key step, rotating the sleeve while contacting the disc allows the nerve to be retracted easily. By aligning the sleeve with the same layer as the disc, the dorsal root can be retracted. Regarding disc removal, if annular fibrils is hard, uh, multiple holes are made with a bipolar and the holes are enlarged with a uh, basket punch. If the hole is too small, 
the disc herniation may not be removed in one piece, so I make an effort to create as large hole as possible. The disc herniation is removed in one piece. Since the sleeve itself may be compressed, this uh, herniation. The sleeve is removed at the end to confirm that there is no residual disc herniation. In this way, partial phrabectomy allows for a clear anatomical view, enabling a better understanding of the spatial relationship and preserving the residual herniation while also being a safer method that avoids the blind insertion of punches.